quick look at the passive loop antenna, the DIY one that I was demonstrating just now, I didn't give you a good look at it. There's your variable capacitor in the center here. I think if I remember correctly, it's about uh, 400, 450 picofarads, something like that. I'm only using the one section of the two gang variable capacitor. And the windings on here are around about 26, 24, 26 windings. And the size of the X's, I think it's just under, it's about 11 inches each side. So that's it. Just don't do what I did if you ever make one of these and drill holes and then try and wind the wire through. That's definitely not a good idea. It's better to cut slots and then wind it over the top much quicker than trying to feed it all the way through. Um, and uh, of course a bit of perspex in the front just to tidy up the panel and this is quite a nice knob with the numbers on it that you can see the white through it reasonably well. Not that I use the numbers for anything. Some of the um, uh, these passive repetitors have markings to, corresponding to the frequencies, for instance, starting at about 500, going up to 1,600, so you know more or less where to set it. Uh, that does help. You can do that. I've never got around to doing that. Might get to do it one day. I think the uh, there's one of the American... Uh, passive loop antennas has that which is rather a nice feature it's a black one with the uh, purple tuning knob on it I can't remember the make now but uh, that's quite a neat antenna so there we are that's just a quick look at the uh, tunable loop antenna that you saw earlier so you can see what it actually looks like it certainly does work very well I must say